We have a $20 trillion debt, and we're going to be now adding a trillion dollars to it this year because of the spending deal. This is a, a rotten deal. All right, well, he tried, but he failed. Rand Paul wanted to go ahead and get a shutdown going if that's what it took to wake up his party to the fact that they were signing on to something where the caps were gone. Uh, and they're not coming back anytime soon. That's his fear. Let's get the read now from the Washington Examiner, Sarah Westwood, Democratic strategist Chuck Rocha, and Fox News contributor Kat Tim. Kat, on that, is it, is it true that they can't revisit this, won't revisit this, and any hint of fiscal discipline, to kind of paraphrase Leon Panetta, is gone? I think that I would be so surprised if they revisited it that I would probably die because it's clearly not going to happen. Rand Paul was the only one to come out and actually say, hey, remember that spending stuff and that debt stuff that we as Republicans were so concerned about when Obama was president? Why aren't we talking about that anymore? The GOP is not a fiscally conservative party anymore. It tried to brand itself as one in the mid-2010s, but right now with this bill adding a trillion to the debt, which is already $20 trillion, we we can see that it was really just more partisan talking points rather than an actual concern, and that's really frightening for the country. You know, sir, what is frightening is when I heard plans that in order to finance the likely trillion dollar deficit we're going to have this year, I'm um, not blaming one party for that. Obviously, they both had their hands in the spending cookie jar. We're going to have to issue a lot more treasury notes and bonds, as if that wasn't already enough of a problem with the backup in interest rates we've been experiencing on all this other stuff. What do you think? I just think it's so interesting to see that Republicans seem to have forgotten their concerns about the, how we service the deficit, about the debt, about the effect and the strain that can have on the economy. Republicans defined themselves under the Obama administration as the only thing standing between unstoppable big government and uh, fiscal sanity, and most of them embraced this deal with open arms. And President Trump has taken some heat for embracing this deal, but he's never really been a conservative ideologue. But a lot of the Republicans Republicans who voted for this without skepticism were very ideological on the issue of fiscal conservatism. And it has been interesting to watch the transformation in just the first year of the Trump presidency. You know, I'm looking at all of these cross currents, Chuck, and I'm wondering, we always play politics because the Democrats do this, Republicans do this. But I mean, this is a big deal. I mean, we are really adding to our debt here, and there doesn't seem to be anything in sight that, that, that will contain it. And I know the administration hopes for growth. Uh, Democrats are big fans of saying that maybe if they do something on infrastructure, spending will spur activity and things will be better. What's your thought? My thought is you're about nine or 10 months away from an election. And what these Republicans are seeing in all of these districts around the country where I'm working at is they're behind. So they didn't want somebody like me or another Democratic strategist wanting that ad saying they've shut down the government for this or that. So what they've done, exactly what Kat said, is run away from where they've always stood to get a Band-Aid on something that's costing billions of dollars. So for two years, they would be good. So they don't have to worry about any shutdown or any anything going on in their district because they're all worried about re-elections. Imagine that here in Washington. Washington, D.C., they're worried about money or power. All right, well, Kat, the bottom line is that we're still in the middle of this market funk. Some people get relieved when they see up arrows by the end of the day, but still a horrific week and still a correction. And some uh, are, are looking at this as a sign of more noise to come, more concerns to come. What about you? Well, if you keep adding and adding to the debt, you are going to keep adding and adding concerns. This isn't a free-for-all. This is the future of our country. And we don't have a fiscally conservative party anymore. The difference between the parties is just what they want to spend money on. On the left, it's sort of entitlement spending. And on the right, it's things like a border wall and the military. There's no one stopping and saying, hey, where's all this money going to come from? How are we actually going to pay for this? And eventually, that's going to get so bad that we're going to be forced to deal with it just because right now we're not feeling it or we are we're not eventually there's going to be a breaking point and we don't see a change in the behavior that's causing it so i'm not very hopeful you know still in the middle of all this era, we had some reads on uh optimism about the president's tax cuts more people liking them his uh, performance on the economy is has risen a little bit and that seems to be in keeping with republicans thinking hey we might be able to dodge a bullet in the fall and and hang on to the House, hang on to the Senate. What do you think? 
Well, certainly that's going to be the foundation of Republicans' argument in the midterms, is that they were able to get the economy going again with these tax cuts. There's certainly lots of anecdotal evidence that wages are going up all across the country, and we're starting to see the broader numbers move in an upward direction. That can also cause, as we've seen this week, some overheating of the markets, and that's problematic for President Trump, only in that he's embraced the rising stock market so much as an indicator of how he has helped the economy, that when the market goes down, he's also going to have to own those dips as well. Uh, in the meantime, Chuck, this market gyration, have you gotten them a lot of stocks? Are you just in like a cash or what are you doing? Well, you know, for the first time in my life, I got a little extra money and I had my money in the stock market. Less than 50% of America owns stocks, but now this redneck Mexican, I have some stocks. So I've been kind of watching it, Neil, and watching you and trying to figure out what do I do with my money right now because I'm, I'm on the political side trying to get things done on Capitol Hill, but in a personal note, as a small business owner going, hmm, hmm. I better be watching this closer. All right. Well, make sure you're just watching us, and then you'll be you'll be fine. Uh, Chuck, thank you very, very much, guys. I want to thank you. In the meantime, you think it's been crazy enough now with the market, twenty-four thousand something. I want you to meet the guy who says try sixteen thousand something. Have you had dinner yet? Still a little early. This might kind of affect your hunger after this.